Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 8. The plan for this lecture is as follows, here we will discuss how to get rid of the first restriction imposed by perfect secrecy, namely we will discuss how to encrypt long messages using short keys and for this we will introduce our first primitive in the computationally secure world namely pseudo random generators and we will discuss various equivalent definitions for pseudo random generators. So, the idea behind encrypting arbitrary long messages using short keys is as follows. Recall the one time pad scheme where the message space, key space and ciphertext space all consist of bit strings of length L bits. So, to, to encrypt a message of L length L bits, sender and receiver agree upon a uniformly random key of size L bits generated by the key generation algorithm and to encrypt the message sender simply performs the XOR of the message with the key and the resultant ciphertext is communicated over the channel. And we discussed rigorously that this notion of sec uh, this encryption process provides you the strongest notion of secrecy namely perfect secrecy, where it is ensured that if a computationally unbounded adversary eavesdrops the ciphertext, then it cannot distinguish apart whether the ciphertext is an encryption of M0 or whether it is an encryption of M1, because the key is a uniformly random bit string of length L bits. That's a bit, that was the basic idea of one time pad scheme. Now, here our goal is to come up with an encryption mechanism where we want to encrypt short messages using long keys, uh, where we want to encrypt long messages, long messages using short keys. So, for this we introduce a new function or a primitive which I denote by G, we will very soon see what exactly this primitive is and what are the properties we require from this primitive. So, what this prim function G does is it takes an input of size little l bits and it gives you an output of size big L bits, where both little l and big L are polynomial functions of your security parameter, but the output of this function g is significantly large compared to the input of this function g. Now, the first modification that we are going to make in the blueprint of one time pad is that instead of sender and receiver agree upon a key which is of as large as the message both sender and receiver are now going to agree upon a uniformly random key, uniformly random uh, string of length little l bits. And now, sender simply cannot XOR this, uh, this string s with the message because the size of the message and the size of the uh, string s are different. So, what sender is going to do is instead of XORing the message with the key which was happening in one time pad sender is going to XOR the bits of the message with the output of the function g on the input s. So, so, since the output of the function g is going to be a string of length big L bits, we can perform the XOR of the bits of the message with the output of the function g on input s and the resultant ciphertext is communicated over the channel. Now, what we hope is if instead of a computationally unbounded adversary, there exists a computationally bounded adversary whose whose running time is polynomially bounded and if it is ensured that the computationally bounded adversary cannot distinguish the output of the function g on the input s from a uniformly random bit string of length big L bits, then it will be ensured that the computationally bounded adversary cannot distinguish apart whether the ciphertext c that it is observing is an encryption of M0 or whether it is an encryption of M1. So, that is a basic idea behind encrypting long messages using short keys. The basic idea is instead of XORing the message with a uniformly random key whose size is as large as the message, we are now going to perform the XOR of the message with an output of this function g and we will assume that a computationally bounded adversary cannot distinguish apart the output of this function g from a uniformly random bit string of length big L bits. So, this function g is called a pseudo random generator and let us see the internal details and the security properties from this primitive called pseudo random generator. So, on a very high level a pseudo random generator denoted by g is a deterministic algorithm which takes as input a uniformly random string of length little l bits and it is going to out going to produce an output whose length is big L bits. And the requirements from this algorithm G is as follows. First of all, the running time of this algorithm G should be a polynomial function of your security parameter. That means, your G should be an efficient algorithm. This internally means that both the value little l 
as well as big L are some polynomial functions of your security parameter right. So, that is the first requirement from your pseudo random generator. The second requirement is that the output of this pseudo random generator should be significantly large or large compared to the input size. Typically in practice the output size is significantly large compared to the input size. And the third requirement which is the security requirement from this primitive is the pseudo randomness requirement. And informally the pseudo randomness requirements requires you that no efficient statistical test should significantly separate apart an output which is produced by the algorithm G from an output of a truly random generator. That means, if you consider a truly random generator which I denote as G dash which is going to uniformly randomly output a bit string of length big L bits, then the pseudo randomness requirement is that no statistical test should be able to distinguish apart G of S versus a uniformly random string produced by the algorithm G dash. This internally means that the output behavior of your algorithm G and G dash should be almost identical and this is captured formally by an indistinguishability based experiment where the intuition behind the indistinguishability based experiment is that no efficient algorithm should be able to distinguish apart a random sample generated by the algorithm G from a random sample generated by a truly random generator G dash. So, let us see the indistinguishability based definition of PRG. So, in this experiment we have a distinguisher whose goal is to distinguish apart a sample generated by the pseudo random generator from a sample generated by a truly random generator and we have a hypothetical verifier or an experiment. And in the experiment the verifier challenges the distinguisher by a string or a sample of length big L bits. And the challenge for this distinguisher is to find out whether this sample y is generated by running the pseudo random generator or by running a truly random generator. Namely the sample y which is thrown as a challenge in the experiment to the distinguisher could have been generated by one of the following two ways. The verifier would have tossed a uniformly random coin and if the coin toss is 0 then the challenge sample which is given to the distinguisher is a uniformly random sample generated by a truly random gen random number generator. Whereas, the if the bit b is equal to 1 then what the verifier would have done is it would have picked a seed or the input for the function g itself uniformly randomly and it would have computed the function g on this input s and would have produced the sample y. So, now the challenge for the distinguisher is to find out the how exactly the sample is generated whether it is generated by uh, running a truly random generator or it is whether it is generated by executing the algorithm G on a uniformly random seat. And the distinguisher has polynomial amount of time to tell whether the y is generated by method 0 or by the method 1. So, the output of the distinguisher is a bit which we denote as b dash and the definition of pseudo random generator is we say an algorithm G is a pseudo random generator if for every polynomial time distinguisher participating in this indistinguishability based experiment the probability that it can correctly identify b equal to b dash is upper bounded by half plus some negligible function in the security parameter right. Where the probability of d outputting b equal to b dash is over the randomness of the distinguisher and of the randomness of the experiment or the verifier. So, here the term PPT which I am introducing here stands for probabilistic polynomial time. So, by a probabilistic polynomial time algorithm I mean a polynomial time algorithm which is of randomized nature. So, for the rest of the course we will be discussing only since we will be discussing computationally secure primitives we will be considering adversaries whose running time will be probabilistic polynomial time. So, now in this definition we require that the probability that d is able to identify the mechanism by which y is generated should be upper bounded by half plus negligible. Why half plus negligible? Because there is always a trivial distinguishing strategy for the distinguisher to just guess the method by which y is generated. 
and the probability by which this guessing strategy of the distinguisher will be successful is half. So, we can never demand in this definition that the probability that distinguishers output is correct should be 0, because there is always a 1 by 2 probability distinguisher who can distinguish or tell whether the y sample is generated randomly or by running the truly ra pseudo random generator. Apart from the probability half, we are also willing to let adversary identify the correct mechanism by which the sample y is generated with a negligible success probability and this is because we are in the computationally secure world and looking ahead we will be using this PRG to encrypt arbitrary long messages. So, remember in the computationally secure world one of the necessary evils that is associated in the computationally secure model is that we should be willing to let the adversary break or attack the scheme with a negligible or very small error probability. So, that is why this additional negligible probability is allowed for the adversary to win the experiment or identify whether the sample is generated randomly or by running the pseudo random generator. I stress here that in this whole experiment the description of the algorithm G is publicly known, because as per the Kirchhoff's principle we never assume that the steps of the algorithm are hidden. In the experiment what is hidden from the adversary is whether the G has been in the, the seed with which the experiment would have invoked the algorithm G, right. And the goal of the distinguisher is to find out whether Y is generated randomly or by running the pseudo random generator. It turns out that there is an equivalent definition for the pseudo random generator and the equivalent, equivalent definition basically demands that irrespective of the way the verifier has decided to choose the sample, the output of the distinguisher should be identical. That means, the alternate definition requires you that the absolute difference between these two probabilities should be upper bounded by a negligible function. So, let us see what exactly these two probabilities are all about. The first probability is the probability that D labels the sample Y as the outcome of a pseudo random generator even though it has been generated by a truly random generator. That means, what is the probability that D outputs B dash equal to 1 given that B equal to 0. So, D output B dash equal to 1 that means, D is labeling the sample Y which is thrown to him as a challenge as the outcome of a pseudo random generator. Given that B is equal to 0 that means, the verifier has decided to choose the sample randomly. Whereas, the second probability is the probability that D labels the sample Y as the outcome of a truly a pseudo random generator given that indeed it was generated by a pseudo random generator, right. So, the second alternate definition requires you that the distinguishing advantage of the distinguisher. So, we say that absolute difference between these two probabilities is the distinguishing advantage of the distinguisher with which it can distinguish apart whether the sample has been generated by a pseudo random generator or truly random generator. So, this alternate definition requires you that irrespective of the way by which the sample y would have been generated, D's response should be almost identical in both the cases except with a negligible probability. And it turns out that we can prove that both these definitions or conditions are equivalent. Namely, we can prove that if we have a pseudo random generator which satisfies the first condition, then it also implies that it has to satisfy the second condition and a vice versa. That means, both these definitions are equivalent to each other. And hence, in the rest of the course, we can use any of these two conditions to mention the security definition of pseudo random generator as per our convenience. Just remember that the first definition says the probabilities that D correctly finds out the mechanism by which Y is generated should be upper bounded by half plus negligible, whereas the second condition requires you that D, the distinguishing advantage of the distinguisher namely its advantage of separating out whether Y is generated by mechanism, mechanism 1 or mechanism 2 should be upper bounded by a negligible probability. So, let us see an example of pseudo random generator. In fact, the construction that we are going to see is not a pseudo random generator and we are going to formally prove that. So, in this example the function g is as follows, it takes a input of size little l bits and it stretches its input by 1 bit, namely it produces an output 
whose length is 1 more than the length of its input and the way it is stretching is as follows. The first L output bits of the algorithm are same as the inputs of the algorithm that means they are going to be uniformly random. Whereas, the last output bit of the algorithm G is simply the XOR of the bits of the inputs of algorithm D. So, that is the description of the algorithm G which is given to you and now you have to prove or disprove whether this algorithm G is pseudo random generator or not. So, to in fact, it turns out that this algorithm G is not a pseudo random generator and for that we can consider the following efficient statistical test which can distinguish apart any sample generated by an algorithm G from a uniformly random string of length L plus 1 bits. If we consider any sample generated by the algorithm G by run on an input on a uniformly random input S, it turns out that in that output the L plus 1 th bit has to be the XOR of the first L bits because that is what is the output property of any output generated by the algorithm G. Whereas, if we consider any uniformly random string of length L plus 1 bits generated by a truly random generator, it may happen that the L plus 1th bit is indeed the XOR of the first L bits, but the probability of this happening is only 1 by 2. That means, you now have a condition which is definitely going to be satisfied for a sample always if the sample would have been generated by the algorithm G, whereas the probability that the same condition holds for a random sample generated by an algorithm G is at most half. Now, based on this intuition, we can convert this statistical test into an efficient distinguisher who can distinguish apart a sample generated by an algorithm G from a truly random generator with a significant probability and the distinguisher strategy is as follows. So, the distinguisher will be thrown with a challenge which will be consisting of a string of length L plus 1 bits and the challenge for the distinguisher is to find out how it is generated, namely whether it is generated uniformly randomly or whether it has been generated by running the algorithm G on a uniformly random input or seed S. Now, the distinguishing strategy for the distinguisher is as follows. The distinguisher labels the sample y as the outcome of the pseudo random generator namely it says b dash equal to 1 or outputs b dash equal to 1 if and only if it finds the L plus 1th bit of the challenge which is given to him is the XOR of the remaining L bits of the challenge. Now, let us calculate the distinguishing advantage of this distinguishing strategy. Let us first find out what is the probability that this distinguishing strategy labels a sample which is uniformly random as a sample generated by a truly random number generator. And it turns out that the probability that d outputs b dash equal to 1 given that b is equal to 0 is half because if b is equal to 0 that means the sample y is truly random and only with probability 1 by 2 it will be ensured that the L plus 1 th bit is actually the XOR of the remaining L bits in which case the distinguisher would have output b dash equal to 1. Whereas, the probability that d outputs b dash equal to 1 given that b is equal to 1 is indeed 1 because if b is equal to 1 that means the challenge or the sample which was given to distinguisher is generated by a pseudo random generator in which case it will indeed be the case that L plus 1 th bit is the XOR of the remaining L bits and if for that case the distinguisher is going to output 1. So, if you consider the distinguishing advantage of the distinguisher it is half which is simply a good distinguishing probability. It is a non negligible function in the security parameter and hence this distinguisher or this algorithm G does not satisfy the definition of pseudo random, pseudo -random generator. So, remember the pseudo recall the pseudo random generator game and in the pseudo random generator indistinguishability game we stress that the distinguisher should be a efficient algorithm, it should be a polynomial time algorithm. Why we have to put that restriction? It turns out that irrespective of the way you design a pseudo random generator, it can be always distinguished by a brute force distinguisher where the distinguisher strategy will be to do a brute force over the all possible inputs for the algorithm G and this brute force distinguisher can always distinguish apart a truly random sample from a pseudo random sample with probability which is almost equivalent to 1. So, let us understand this. So, any pseudo random generator since it has to produce an output which is significantly large than its input, it has to deterministically expand its input and consequently 
the output of the pseudo random generator is going to be far away from a uniformly random string because for a truly random generator each of the output bits it is generated independently whereas for a pseudo random generator each of the output bits is actually a deterministic function of the input. So, to demonstrate my point let us consider an arbitrary pseudo random generator let us not focus into the internal details of this algorithm g and imagine that this is a length doubling pseudo random generator which expands its input by it just doubles the input that means if it takes an input of size n bit it produces an output of size 2 n bits. And we want to compare this algorithm with a, with a truly random generator g dash which would have produced uniformly random bit strings of length 2 n bits. Now, if we compare the outputs of the algorithm g it turns out that most strings of length 2 n bits do not occur in the range of algorithm g. So, what I mean by range of g is the set of all possible outputs which could have been generated by running the algorithm g on various possible inputs. Namely, the range of truly random generator is the bigger circle which is the set of all possible strings of length 2 n bits because a truly random generator is going to produce each of the candidate 2 n bit string as an outcome with probability 1 over 2, 2 to the power 2 n. Whereas, if we consider the algorithm g it is not the case that all strings of length 2 n bits are likely going to occur as the output. The maximum number of distinct outputs which the algorithm g could produce is at most 2 to the power n namely the number of possible inputs for the algorithm g because since the algorithm g is a deterministic algorithm for each input you will obtain a specific output. So, at most the best you can hope for that for each distinct output the algorithm g is giving you a distinct output. So, the maximum number of outputs which your algorithm g can produce is at most 2 to the power n and as you can clearly see that 2 to the power n is a very very small subset of the bigger space namely 2 to the power 2 n. This means that if we consider the probability that a uniformly random 2 n bit string which would have been produced by a truly random generator and if we calculate the probability that that truly random generate that that a uniformly random string of length 2 n bit could have also occurred as the outcome of the algorithm g well the probability for that is 2 to the power n by 2 to the power 2 n because the probability that the truly random string would have been also produced by g depends upon whether there exists a seed which when used with the algorithm g would also would have produced that truly random truly random string and the probability of happening that is 2 to the power minus n. Now, based on this idea we can design the following distinguisher which can gen distinguish apart these two ra the, the random number generators with significant probability. So, on your left hand side you have the length doubling PRG whereas, in your right hand side you have the truly random generator generating strings of length 2 n bits and here is our distinguisher. The distinguisher is given a challenge a sample of length 2 n bits and it has to find out whether it has been generated by running the first algorithm or the second algorithm namely the verifier would have generated a coin which and if the coin would have been 0 the sample would have been generated randomly and if the coin would have been 1 then the sample would have been generated by running the algorithm g on a uniformly random seed. Now, the distinguishing strategy for the distinguisher is the following it does a brute force namely it goes through all possible candidate values of s and runs the algorithm g and checks for any whether for any candidate s g of s would have given the sample y and if that is the case then distinguisher labels the challenge y to be generated by the pseudo random generator otherwise it labels a sample y as being generated by a truly random generator. Of course, the running time of this distinguisher is of order 2 to the power n because it has to do a brute force of a key space uh, of a seed space with whose uh, size is 2 to the power n. So, clearly it is inefficient, but the point which I want to make clear through this ex example is that this distinguishing strategy can always distinguish apart significantly these two algorithms. So, let us calculate the distinguishing advantage of this distinguisher. So, what is the probability that a truly random sample gets labeled by this distinguisher as a sample generated by a pseudo random generator that means, what is the probability d outputs b dash equal to 1 given b equal to 0 well as we discussed earlier the probability for that is 2 to the power minus n. 
Whereas, if the sample y would have been indeed generated by a pseudo random generator, the distinguishing strategy would indeed output b dash equal to 1 with probability 1. So, that means the if you take the absolute difference of the dif these two probabilities, the distinguishing advantage of the distinguisher turns out to be almost 1, namely 100 percent. So, it can clearly distinguish apart whether the sample has been generated by the PRG or by the truly random generator. But since in our definition we are considering security only against an efficient distinguisher, this distinguishing strategy would not be considered as a threat as per our model. So, we have seen an uh, we have seen two definitions of PRG based on the notion of indistinguishability. It turns out that there is an alternate definition which is different from the indistinguishability based definition and the alternate definition is as follows. So, imagine a truly random generator G dash which produces a string of length big L bits and how the truly random generator would have worked. For i equal to 1 to L, it would have tossed a fair coin unbiased coin L times and it would have produced the outcome. And since the coin is unbiased with probability half each of the output bits would have been either 0 or 1. That means, if there is an adversary or an algorithm who has observed the first i outcome bits of this truly random generator, where this i is anything in the range 1 to l minus 1, it cannot predict the next output bit of the truly random generator except with probability half, because each of the bits of a outcome of a truly random generator is independent of each other. That means, if I the probability that, that this algorithm A having observed the first i bits of the truly random generator correctly outputs the next bit is always upper bounded by 1 by 2 right and this holds for any i in the range 1 to l minus 1. The alternate definition of pseudo random generator is that we should expect something similar to happen also for pseudo random generator. That means, for a pseudo random generator even if there is a polytime distinguisher or an algorithm which has seen the first i bits of the output of the pseudo random generator on an unknown seed, it should not be able to predict the next output bit of the pseudo random generator except with probability half plus negligible. And that intuition is now captured by an indistingu uh, by an experiment which we call as the next bit prediction algorithm experiment and in this experiment we have the algorithm G for which we want to consider the security. The description of the algorithm is publicly known and the challenge for the adversary is generated as follows. The experiment or the verifier runs the algorithm G by selecting a uniformly random input for this algorithm G and it produces the outcome of the algorithm and the adversary asks or challenges the adversary says ok you give me any i bits of the output that you have generated where i is anything in the range 1 to l minus 1. So, depending upon i the experiment or the verifier throws the first i bits of the output generated by the verifier and the challenge for the adversary is to compute the next bit of the output y generated by the verifier by observing the first i output bits of the sample as generated by the verifier. And we say that the algorithm G which is publicly available is unpredictable if the probability that A outputs the i plus 1th bit correctly is upper bounded by half plus negligible. So, notice that in this experiment there is nothing the, the adversary is not supposed to distinguish apart two algorithms or a sample generated by algorithm 1 versus algorithm 2. The essence of this experiment is that adversary has to correctly predict the next bit next output bit of the algorithm G having observed the first i output bits of the algorithm G on an unknown input. I stress that the input S is not known to the algorithm because if the input S is also known to the algorithm A then the adversary can correctly predict the next output bit of y with probability 1. The challenge for the adversary is in the absence of the input S it has to correctly predict the i plus 1 at output. And in the definition we upper bound the success probability of the adversary by half plus negligible again half because there is always a guessing a guessing adversary who can guess what could be the next output bit of the algorithm G and with probability 1 by 2 this guessing strategy is always going to be correct. 
Apart from that, we are all also willing to let the adversary correctly output the next ith, next output bit of the algorithm G with a negligible probability and this comes from the fact that we are in the computationally secure world and one of the evils associated with the computationally secure world is that we should be willing to let adversary break your scheme or attack your scheme with a, a small success probability. So, it turns out that we can prove that if any algorithm G satisfies this next bit experiment or if your algorithm G is unpredictable as per is defined unpredictable as per this definition, then it also satisfies the indistinguishability based definition of PRGs that we have seen previously. I hope you enjoy this lecture. Thank you.